If you're a gardener and you're driving down the street, do you ever go by a house that is just so floral and so magnetic that you say, stop the car? This is that house. From the very beginning, when you walk up the walkway to this beautiful floral exhibit, mm -hmm. <laughs> you start seeing the flowers that are so welcoming right in the driveway here. Mm -hmm. So Mitch, what is your overall concept? What were you going for? So I, when I moved into this house, uh, I fell in love with this Tudor cottage. And I really, over the, a couple years of growing vegetables, I decided I wanted to convert this to a cottage garden to kind of match that, the style of the house. So what you're seeing is year two of that conversion, really in the middle of the process. Um, and these beds that we're seeing closest to us are brand new. Everything from the flocks that you're seeing to uh, the nepeta here, and then some annuals tucked in um, to kind of fill some of this space. I wanted to have um, a feeling when you walk from the driveway that you're seeing something you can't see from the street. It's gorgeous. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And tell us about your pot. Uh, yeah, so this is, you know, I bought a couple gorgeous pots. <laughs> Uh, last season, I think I had some ferns in them, and then as I was cleaning them out in the fall, I broke this one. I mean, completely like a third <laughs> it of it happens. broken off. So I, you know, I thought I could throw it away, or I can bury it and try to do the buried pot look. Yeah. So that was a bit of an experiment, and I think it works. It does. Know. It does. I, I've got the super tunias underneath here because they just grow and grow and grow and grow mm -hmm. all season long. Mm -hmm. You only need one, and then the alyssum that also kind of takes up that space around the back. It's gorgeous. And the, the little bees and the oh, butterflies yeah. are really enjoying that this morning. Yeah. So, and your celosia is such a nice background too. Well, you to came those. at a good time for the wildflowers. So I, I planted the wildflower seeds up here, a little, a little bit uphill. And you know, wildflower seeds, you, you essentially are sprinkling them on the, the soil. You know, they, don't, uh -huh. they need light to germinate. Right. Well, uh, right after that, a huge rain came, and I think just washed them all in this direction. <laughs> so they're all right down here. Yeah, so they're all in one place, which is its own kind of like, the, the beauty of a cottage garden is that it doesn't have to look perfect. It, it's supposed to look a little bit of messy. It's supposed to change year after year. So, yeah. I, I, you know, I think it works in this space. It's just great. And you put the fence in yourself. Yeah, so, so. this fence came with the house, but it was in the backyard. Um, it's probably about 40, 35, 40 years old from what my neighbors tell me. And I, I thought it would be a perfect fence when it came time to replace the backyard's fence to put up here. So I cut off the bottom third to shorten it a little bit and then installed it around here to give a, a sense of weight and barrier to the garden. So Mitch, I love the seasonality mm -hmm. of what you've done here. And just in this driveway strip, you've got all three seasons of growing. So yeah. tell us about your flowers here. Yeah, so we've got our summer interest kind of anchored down here on this, the spring interest, which is the Coreopsis that you're just seeing the leaves of now. Some A little bit more summer here, especially this color is my favorite. This is a fall, the sedum is uh, more of a fall interest. It actually mm -hmm. stays through the winter, the, the strength of uh, the leaves. And then of course our sunflower monster, um, <laughs> which nothing grows as, as well as the plants you don't plant. So. <laughs> Last year I had a couple different sunflowers that I think crossbred and then this happened. So, you know, it has kind of grown multiple heads. You can see there's actually a couple different varieties mixed in here. You look at the ring on the inside of that, um, which has been amazing. So um, I've had to really kind of come in and tame this a bit because it's overgrown and, and starting to kill some of the other things I had planted because it's, it's really soaking up all that light. Um, but it's your sentinel. But it is. Into it's the, into it's so the... beautiful, and everyone comments on it because who doesn't love sunflowers? Flowers that people see as they're walking down the street. They're in their. They're strolling their babies. They're driving down. This beautiful hibiscus mm -hmm. is one of the first things they would see. I'm kind of uh, a lover of the dark leaf plants, things with dark foliage. So that's what drew me to the hibiscus. I don't always love hardy tropicals, this is the exception. Because these flowers are so huge, I mean, it's the size of a small dinner plate. Comes back every year, and even when sometimes they break from storms, I'm able to repot those and put them in different places. Cool. The other, I think, showstopper in the garden is, is, is this, this is, I know it as the Thomas Jefferson plant. What did you say that a it was? A smartweed. Smartweed. Um, Family. Yeah. It is gorgeous with, you know, the, the flowers that are kind of hanging down. It grows from seed every year. 
So I didn't actually plant these this year. I planted it last year. It's come back from its own seeds. So a, a really easy plant that you can share with somebody else because every year you're going to get babies that come up. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to your house for dinner and I walk up the walkway and immediately I see this beautiful yarrow and other plants. Tell us about that. And I love the way you've put the pots right here as a, a a sign of where to walk, where to come in. Yeah, so I think the best way to talk about this is symmetry versus asymmetry, right? Like a, uh, a cottage garden doesn't necessarily need symmetry, but I need a little bit to frame where my door is gonna be, which is why I have these pots. Kind of coming over to the yarrow, what I like about that is it's a low maintenance plant. <laughs> you really do very little to keep them, keep them going. And these blooms will stay kind of upright and have that color to them. Even through the winter, they'll have a little structure. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that. And then you can't have a cottage garden without some purple cornflower <laughs> or, you know, there's a million varieties of echinacea. Um, and the bees and butterflies will thank you for it. And so. even you'll notice, like, these aren't the same one. They're slightly different colors. And I think that's another testament to cottage gardens. Oh, they don't have yeah. to match yeah. for it to really pop right. and look cohesive. So, you know, I also fill in these spaces. There's some dianthus here, some unwanted um, morning glories. Tell us about your grass. Oh, yeah. I so love this your is, grass I think, there. you know, one of the colloquial names for this is the Mexican feather grass. I'm sure it has several other names. I just think it's beautiful because of the way it moves. Yes. You know, they often talk about, gardeners talk about texture. This to me is, is an example of bringing in a different texture than the way that mm -hmm. these things move here. Yeah. Thinking about these pots is this can be a really low cost, low maintenance um, way to bring some height to the garden. Somebody gave me these arborvitaes that just sat in pots for years. So I was able to repot them here. They've done really well. Put some inexpensive, like I think mini Supertunia Vista or something that's in there. I can't remember the name of that to fill in that space, to give it a little pop of color. The anchor species in the summer garden seems to be this beautiful black-eyed season. Mm -hmm. Mitch, tell us a little more about it and why yours looks so much better than <laughs> mine does. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I guess the first thing I would say is it, it, what variety did I get? This was, this was gifted to me by other Nashville gardeners. Many cultivars of this species are Right, there, and yeah. it was so successful. So that's where it began. After that, you know, I would say the soil, I'm pretty lucky to have amazing soil in this property. This house was built in 1942, so the soil has not been removed here for a very long time. So there's been lots of things living and dying and turning into soil in this space for a mm -hmm. long time. So I really don't fertilize very much, only when I put a new plant in to get those roots uh, initiated because I wanted to take up space yeah. here, something that you could see from the street. It seems and to work well. And you have it in several spots around several here. Several spots around the yard. I love the way the it, it, it makes the garden cohesive. This Veronica is fantastic and is doing a great job of attracting all these bees, yeah. some small, some big. Uh, this is what we like to see in a, in a garden like this because they pollinate yeah. everything you've got. Well, you know, as you know, a lot of people will cut that Veronica in the middle of the season so that it'll have a, a new flush of blooms that are even, which I could have done, but the bees are obviously enjoying it, so I'm just yes. letting them chow down. And how could you take away their food supply? <laughs> right. So this space is obviously a work in progress. You can see some weeds in here, but I had very mature azaleas that were here when I moved in. You can see some of the spaces that they used to take up um, that were beautiful, but in the deep freeze of the winter that I think it was negative 14 or something, it took everything that from that area. For days. Now was my opportunity to try something different. So I got these Encore azaleas to, so they would rebloom. It'll be a while since they, till they fill in that space. So I created some kind of loose rows here. I wanted the white color. Those azaleas are a lavender color. And then I've got this white here from the white wands, Veronica, and then this purple heuchera to kind of repeat that color. I love that. And then I think the <clears throat> color, um, contrast of having that deep purple with the chartreuse and the creeping ginny is what I like most. I mm -hmm. like to see contrast in the I like garden. the border broken up. I understand this is a work in progress, but mm -hmm. I am so glad that in your journey here, you have included flocks. Mm -hmm. I love the flocks and so signature of a cottage garden. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. You've done so much and it's so alive. I love the mm -hmm. butterflies and the bees and the everything going on here. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. If you love gardening as much as I do, you'll want to subscribe to this channel. 
we showcase not only gardens, but gardeners as well, and the joy that the two of those mesh together can bring.